In this question, they give us a table and tell us that, that the table is all about insect measurements. Here are the insects we're talking about, A, B, C, and D, and here are their lengths in inches, a half of an inch, three-fourths of an inch, three-tenths, and a third of an inch. Which insect has the shortest length? So we're comparing all of these, right? We're comparing these fractions. Well, some of these fractions are really easy to think about in terms of money. So let's look at A, B, and C in terms of money. A half. If I have half of a dollar, I have 50 cents. So it's half of a dollar, 50 cents. Okay. Three-fourths of a dollar. Seems difficult, right? But remember that four quarters make a dollar. So having three-fourths is like having three quarters. So 0.75, that's like 75 cents or three quarters. So what does this mean? We're looking for the shortest length. And we already know that B is larger than A. So we can cross that out. Next, we look at C. Well, what's that equal to? Well, three-tenths, you can think of tenths as dimes in money. Like how many dimes do you have to make a dollar? Well, that's like three dimes or 30 cents. And that's shorter than A. So we know A can't be the answer. Maybe C is. But let's look at a third. So how can we think about thirds? Well, let's turn it to a decimal. How do we do that? Well, um, we can take 1 and divide it by 3, right? Or you might know, I'll just write this out for a second, that 1 third is 0 0.3333333 three, three, three repeating, right? So it's a little bit larger than C, which means that C is the shortest one here. But how would we know that intuitively? I like to think of a clock. This is my clock right here. And I like to think of a third as a third of an hour. Why is that nice? Well, because every hour, right, has 60 minutes if you go around the clock. Right, there's 60 minutes in an hour. So a third of an hour, right, maybe about here, is about this much. Right, it's a third of an hour. Here's another third, and then another third. How much would a third of an hour be? Not very well drawn. Well, a third of an hour would be 20 minutes. Well, you're saying, well, Sean, how did you get that? Well, if we took 60 minutes, and to find a third, you divide your 60 by 3. And that gives you 20 minutes. But that might confuse you for a moment, right? Because here, I said, I just told you that one third is 0 0.3333 repeating. And now I'm telling you it's like 20 minutes. Well, they're both correct. They're just in different terms, right? 20 minutes is 20 minutes in terms of an hour. This is in terms of tenths. So what, are we, what should we do? Well, since we're comparing C and D, we should think about C in terms of an hour, right? So instead of dimes now, we want to think about this in terms of minutes. So what would this be? Well, 60 minutes divided by 10 would give you one-tenth. That would be six minutes, right? And here we have three-tenths. So not, we don't have six minutes. We have six, 12, 18 minutes, right? Six times three. And that's 18 minutes. And I know this seems like a really roundabout process, but it's very intuitive because what happens now is you can see that 18 minutes is less than 20 minutes. So this length, 3 tenths, has to be shorter than this one right here. Now, if you don't like any of these techniques, another way to compare 3 tenths, right, and 1 third that I like, is to find a common denominator. What does that mean? Well, it means take a third, multiply the numerator and denominator by 10, because then what you get is 10 over 30. And then, in this one, multiply the bottom and top by 3. What do you get then? Well, you get 9 over 30. What did I just do? Well, I knew that the least common multiple, right, of 3 and 10 is 30. So I scaled them accordingly by multiplying 10 by 3 to get to 30 and 3 by 10 to get to 30. And then I could see that 9 tenths is less than 10 thirtieths. That's another way of doing it. But we go into all these techniques in detail in other videos. I just wanted to remind you there's a lot of ways of doing it. And again, if you're curious how I got this number over here, if you wanted to figure that out, you could take the numerator and divide it by the denominator. 1 divided by 3. You could do the long division here. 3 does not go into 1. So you put a decimal, right, as 1.0. 3 does go into 10, but how many times? Well, 3 times. That's 0.3 because it's really, well, this, not, this is not 10, this is 1.0. And then you can keep dividing. 3 times 3 is 9. You subtract 9 from 10, you get 1. Bring down a zero if you no longer division, you'll see that this will keep happening. Because again, three goes into ten three times. Three times three is nine. I'm running out of room here. Subtract, 
you get another 10, and so forth, which is why you get 0.3 repeating. So you can convert any, any fraction to a decimal by dividing the numerator by denominator. Anyway, lots of information there. I mean, I would go with the clock and money analogy until you get a good comparison, but there are so many ways to compare these. I hope you find one that you really like. All right, thanks a lot.